So two Northern Ontario hunters, Otis and Elmer, got a pilot to fly them into the Canadian wilderness where they managed to bag two big bull moose. As they were loading the plane to return home, the pilot told them that the plane could only take the hunters, their gear, and one moose. Well, the hunters objected strongly saying, last year we shot two and the pilot let us take them both. And he had exactly the same plane as yours. Reluctantly, the pilot, not wanting to be outdone by another bush pilot, gave in and everything was loaded onto the plane. However, even under full power, the little plane couldn't handle the load and it went down, crashing in the wooded wilderness. Somehow surrounded by the moose, the clothing, sleeping bags and other things, Otis and Elmer survived the crash. After climbing out of the wreckage, Otis asked, any idea where we are? And Elmer replied, I think we're pretty close to where we crashed last year. Wilderness experiences are supposed to help us to grow in wisdom and understanding, but apparently that is not always the case. My name is Sue Ann Ward. I am the rector of Grace Anglican Church in Waterdown. This is not going to be a typical sermon. Next Sunday is our parish's annual vestry meeting. That is the Anglican Church's version of an AGM. My message today will be a charge to vestry, a brief glance at some of the ministry happenings planned for the rest of 2021, and an invitation to you to expand on current plans and to help cast a vision for the future. Let's begin with a reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved with you. I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is an exciting time in the life of Grace Church. So much of our parish's focus and energy over the past few years have been around realizing the funding and the planning for the construction of Bobby's Place, a new community gathering space named in honor of Bobby Smiley, a precious child of our parish. Unless God has other plans, it looks like this is the year that we will have shovels in the ground. We have received bids on the project. And we'll have the opportunity at our vestry meeting to decide to enter into an agreement with a contractor and to move forward with construction. In addition to the beautiful new space at the west end of our building, this project will provide Grace Church with the opportunity to undertake upgrades to the building's electrical service that will support the installation of solar panels. This clean energy source will allow us to reduce our carbon footprint and further our environmental justice efforts. We've been careful to make decisions that protect and preserve our planet as we have designed Bobby's Place. For example, the water heater that will provide hot water to the new kitchenette and washroom will be a demand unit. It will only heat water when it is needed and it will be solar powered. The electrical service upgrade will also facilitate the church's ability to have an outdoor walk-in freezer to store food for our Food with Grace Water Down Food Bank and our other food security programs. The outdoor freezer will enable us to sell most of the freezers that are currently in the building, freeing up usable space for ministry. It will also increase our cold storage capacity, enabling us to accept large donations of food that can be shared with partner food security agencies. 
All of this will better equip Grace Church to serve as a resilience hub for our community. You will have seen this week the terrible situation in Texas where people are struggling in frigid temperatures without power, heat, clean water, and food. We know from experience that the power goes out frequently and for long periods of time in our area. In fact, I have seen posts on Facebook where Water Down has been renamed Power Down. With the increasingly extreme weather patterns resulting from climate change, this situation will only worsen. The alterations that we are making to our building will ensure that Grace Church is a safe, comfortable place where our neighbors can come to for help when extreme weather or other disasters strike. And we are working to make sure that everyone in our community feels at home at Grace Church. The much used walkway that runs through the church property from Mill Street to the parking lot on Main Street will be replaced as we conclude the construction of Bobby's Place. In the coming months, we will be selling walkway bricks that can be engraved to memorialize special people, pets, and occasions. This is an opportunity for members of our Waterdown community to create a lasting tribute to those who have made a difference in the lives of others. The erection of a new bell tower atop Bobby's Place will allow the parish's flintoft bell to ring out in our community once more. The bell was presented to the church in honor of Thomas Flintoff, a Waterdown resident and a parishioner of Grace Church who died on the battlefield during World War I. The tower will be dedicated to the men and women of the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry who have served our country so valiantly over, for over a century. The people of Grace Anglican Church engage in ministry both within and beyond the walls of the church building. There are some places in our world where gatherings can occur under the shade of a tree year round. But as I look out my window at the snow currently blanketing our neighborhood, I am reminded that this is not possible in Waterdown. We need a beautiful, accessible and functional building in which to gather for life-giving activities. But creating Bobby's Place is not an end in itself. It is the beginning of the next part of our journey. After the Spirit descended on Jesus at his baptism, the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. And Jesus spent 40 days, that's biblical speak for a long time, in a process of discernment and preparation for his ministry. We are told in today's gospel passage that he came out of the wilderness prepared to take up his new ministry, proclaiming the good news of God. I invite you, as we begin the season of Lent, to enter into a period of discernment. I urge you to consider, what is the good news that God's people need to hear right now? What is God's will for our community in this moment, in our time and place? What ministry is the Spirit empowering us to launch? Who needs our love and support? And who can we partner with to meet those needs? I invite you to pray about and ponder what's next. And I hope that you will dream big because I feel sure that God has big plans for Grace Church. For that and for our many blessings, thanks be to God. Amen.